The Azimut S8 is the fourth in the Italian brand's S collection of sport cruisers, tucked in between the S7 and the Grande S10. Depending on how you define a super yacht, at a fraction over 24.6 meters, she either falls just inside or outside the category. And I, for one, am curious to find out how she handles herself in terms of space and comfort, performance and functionality. So let's find out. Like the S10, the exterior design is by Alberto Mancini and you can definitely see the family resemblance. She looks modern and muscular, but also sleek and stylish. Note also the full height glazing, a feature introduced by Mancini. And here where we have the transparent fashion plate, I'm not sure if the camera can pick this out, you can see the clear coat carbon fiber used for the construction of the superstructure to keep the weight down and the center of gravity low. L'S8 nasce da un'idea veramente importante, quella di dare una nuova linea e mandare il design, il linguaggio di design di Azimut verso il futuro. Ed è un progetto di cui io vado molto fiero e sono molto soddisfatto perché è veramente per me diventata un'icona, è una barca che rappresenta un po' la 911 del mare e mi è entrata veramente nel sangue dopo una prova eseguita a mare e che mi ha veramente colpito come la barca tiene il mare e come veramente la sportività che un designer di solito diciamo trasmette tramite un foglio di carta e una modellazione tutto il processo di design verificandolo di persona a bordo mi ha dato veramente un'emozione unica e ancora oggi quando la rivedo ogni volta è sempre una barca eccezionale The foredeck on the S8 is something of a highlight with this high-low carbon fiber table and loads of sunbathing and dining space. And the whole area can be covered by not one but two awnings, so you can choose whether to swelter in the sun on the sun pads or relax in the shade on the sofa seating. This is a design detail that I like, a stainless steel cup holder and this design motif is a recurring theme as we'll see later. And the final touch of class are the pop-up LED lights. The S8 is over four meters shorter than the Grande S10, so no room for the raised cockpit in the stern, which is one of the defining features of the larger model. But there is still plenty of room for a very comfortable cockpit with loads of dining and lounging space. This carbon fiber dining table, for example, folds out to twice the size to seat a full complement of 10 guests. And there's the big sun pad over the transom with reclinable backrests and storage underneath for seat covers, fenders and the like. And the whole area can be covered by an awning. And in the other corner, we have a bar unit. Here we have fridge, ice maker. There's the option of a barbecue grill here. And behind, we even have a pop-up TV, which swivels round so it can be viewed from the corner seating. No high-low platform here. Instead, the whole thing rotates together with the transom door to create a wide beach platform and reveal the tender garage with room for a four-meter tender and the jet ski, one of the very few yachts in her class with room for both. So you don't need to store anything here that might ruin Mancini's racy exterior lines. But before going inside, let's take a quick look at the flybridge. Remember, this is a sport fly cruiser, but this is a real fly deck. We have the sump pad forward. We have another bar unit here, this time with barbecue grill. We have the high-low dining table. And if you want more shade during mealtimes, 
the bimini top can be raised at the touch of a button. So plenty of room for the whole family to hang out up here if you have an owner operator driving the boat, for example. Moving into the main salon, note that everything from the aft deck all the way forward to the helm station is on one level with no steps. We have the two opposing sofas with a pop-up TV in the corner there, storage for china or glassware, the dining table, of course, more storage underneath the helm station. And this is an unusual feature, another bar unit with fridge, ice maker. We have a sink, of course, and a pop-up faucet. No aft galley on the S8. Instead, it's on what Azimut calls the mid-deck, halfway between the main and lower decks. It's a good size, as you can see, and well appointed with Miele appliances. Basically, it's part of the social areas on board, but there is a sliding door just in case you happen to be frying onions. And a cool feature is this. It's a hold or cantina. There's a wine cellar down there, there's storage space for cans and dry goods, everything you might need in the galley while cruising for a few days. The master suite is a midships to take advantage of the full 5.55 meter beam. The interior design is by Francesco Guida and is fully consistent with what we've come to expect from his work on other models in the S collection, with a mix of natural finishes for practicality and high gloss for a touch of sparkle. But this is an interesting feature. It doesn't actually serve any useful function. It's not an AC vent or anything, but it adds visual interest. And it also echoes the design of the stainless steel bottle holders we saw on the foredeck. Notice also the indirect ambient lighting and the designer brand fixtures and fittings. It's all very tasteful, chic, but also discreet. Not forgetting the walk-in wardrobe, and it's a real walk-in wardrobe, I might add, and the storage space under the bed, as in all the cabins. Every cubic centimeter of space has been studied and used intelligently. And by the way, the TV, is behind the magic mirror. Here we have the bathroom for the twin single cabin to starboard with Pullman berth, but it also serves as a day head. Further forward, we have another twin single also with a Pullman berth, but this time with its own ensuite bathroom. And in the bow, we have the VIP suite. The VIP suite feels pleasantly spacious thanks to the wide Azimut style bow. And note also the height of the bed. In these cabins, it's usually on a raised level, but this is a standard height as you'd find in your own home. So you don't feel like you've got to climb onto the bed. As you'd expect on a yacht of this size, there is a two man cabin next to the engine room with access from the side deck. And there's also a washer dryer down there. Of course, no sport cruiser is complete without an electric sunroof over the helm station. The S8 is powered by triple Volvo Penta IPS 1350 drives, the most powerful in the IPS range, delivering 1,000 horsepower each for a top speed of 34 knots and a cruising speed of 28 knots. The Garmin electronics are completely integrated into the IPS system, so you can see all the engine room data, including pull-ups and alarms on this glass bridge console. And because the monitoring and propulsion systems are packaged together, it's a one-stop shop when it comes to servicing and maintenance.
The advantages of the IPS pods in terms of performance, comfort and maneuverability are well known, but there are also fuel efficiency benefits, especially when combined with lightweight carbon fiber for the construction. At cruising speed, all three engines consume 385 liters of fuel per hour for a range of 260 nautical miles, and that's with a 10% reserve left in the tank. Anzimuth say that that is up to 25% more efficient than an equivalent yacht with conventional inline drive shafts and propellers. With 3,000 horsepower under the hood, the S8 feels sprightly and sporty, as you'd imagine, but in no way skittish, and the power delivery is smooth and assured. Active trim control automatically regulates the longitudinal trim, which helps to make the handling even more responsive and further reduce fuel consumption. There's also a Seakeeper gyro stabilizer in the engine room for motion comfort, both underway and at anchor. The production boat market up to 24 meters is both crowded and competitive. But it's a segment in which Azimut often leads the way. They certainly know how to throw in a few surprises when they present a new model, and the S8 doesn't disappoint. Although she can be handled without a crew by a committed owner-operator, my feeling is that by far the majority will prefer to just sit back and enjoy the ride.